everyone, welcome back to another Nerds Order music interview. Today we are with a member of the band Magnolia Park. What is up, dude? What's going on? What's going on? Not much, Thank you man. Us. Hey, thanks for being here, man. Let's get started. So right. tell me a little bit about you. Oh, about me? Ah, um, I'm an anime lover. I love anime. Uh, I love, also, also love comics. So majority of the time I'm either like watching anime or reading a manga or a comic book. Um... If I'm not doing music, I'm probably taking photos or videos um, somewhere around Orlando. Nice. Oh, uh, anime, man. You got me there, brother. I'm a big nerd <laughs> myself. Yeah. I mean, hey, we're called Nerds Order for a reason. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Uh, me and a bunch of whack-ass friends made for shits and giggles, and I'm like, no, I'll start up music on this. Why not? <laughs> we have an anime page, comic page, etc. Then, uh, um, Where did music begin for you? Music began for me, oh man, I remember, like, specifically remember the first time of me, like, actually listening to music and understanding it and, like, remembering, like, that one memory was uh, when Michael Jackson's Thriller came out uh, during, I think it was, like, oh, wow, it was, like, five when I first heard that. And then, like, I started, I actually started singing when I was in, like, third grade. And ever since then, I've just never stopped. Nice. I love it, dude. That's awesome. All right, some peace, Michael Jackson. He has some really good stuff. I miss him. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Amazing stuff. Real. So what made you guys think of the band name? Uh, So there's a park near us where we normally meet. And just like hang out and stuff like that, and it was Magnolia Park, and we're like, you know what? This is like our own little homage to that place of how everything kind of started. Nice, nice. I like that. All right, my next question is: Describe the music making process to me. Like, how does it all come together? So, all of us are are songwriters. So, basically, what we do is we give ourselves a deadline, and during that deadline, we each write five songs apart. And then we come together and then we work on the best out of the 25 or 30 songs that we end up having uh, by that deadline. And then once we finish that process, um, we kind of go into the studio. Me, I normally focus on the lyrics and the melodies. Tristan and Freddie uh, focus more on like the beat aspect of it and the guitars. Uh, Joe normally focuses on the drumming and just gives ideas as uh, he and I are both videographers, so we're also giving ideas of how we could do a video for each thing that we do. I love it. I'm, lo I'm loving this. So what was the process behind Sick of It All? Ooh, Sick of It All. So Tristan had this idea, and he, he wrote it out, and he sent it over to me. And weirdly enough, I already had, like, my studio set up already ready to go because I was going to work on a cover uh to put out and he was like hey check this song out uh i think it's really dope uh just just give it a spin and then literally 15 minutes later i sent him back the first draft of sick of it all which the first draft is literally like so the way how the song was originally put the chorus was actually the first verse and the first verse is actually the chorus so we flipped those and then we kind of just worked on it we wanted something that that meant something so we were like all right cool how do we feel right now about the world and we we're like we're just sick of it we're sick of like all of the negativity we're sick of all the segregation we're sick of all the canceling and everything we're just like we're just sick of it so that's why we wrote sick of it all nice i saw the uh, my friend sent me over the music video um how was that even like how was that filmed where did the ideas come from for that one um we wanted it to be different than like what other bands kind of did like around that around that time so we kind of went down to Tampa Florida to uh I forgot what the studio name was but we had our buddy Andy Ocean shoot that for us uh that's like one of the only videos that's shot by another videographer other than our main videographer which is Evan Draper um and we wanted something that's like all right cool what's another way to show that we're sick of it all and what better way to do that than being in an insane asylum that actually fits way too well <laughs> be real 
I, I noticed a lot of that when I was watching it because it's like I hate I'm sick of everything in this world too like all the BS all the drama all the crap it's like what happened to just peace and quiet yeah I missed that I missed that I totally I picked it up in the song while I was hearing it I'm just like yeah, these guys have the same idea <laughs> yeah thank you thank you yeah I mean we just wanted we just wanted to write something that that came from us like came from what like majority of us were thinking so that's how sick of it all really came to be Loved it. I'll see. So it's one of my favorite songs today, right now. I've been, I've listened to it maybe at least fifteen times already. Really? Yeah, I like. <laughs> I listen to music. I listen to it more than once. I like looking into all the lyrics and finding all the meanings. Yeah. And, and I was like, I think my third playthrough when I picked up on like how it's like they're sick of the bullshit and everything like that. Yeah. I just related to it immediately. I'm like, yeah, I can, I can agree with the song entirely. Because like I'm the kind of guy who hates BS, who just hates the world's drama and negativity. It's like what happened to all the positivity? What happened to love? And like when I picked that up when I heard that song. I'm like, yeah, these guys definitely have the same idea when it comes to that. Yeah, thank you, thank you. I mean, we really worked hard on that one. We wanted that one to kind of be a staple for what we're going to be creating next. Um, and literally, we blew up on TikTok because of it, and that was just like a whim. Like, oh, we're just going to post this now in the middle of the night. And then we woke up to it being blown up crazy. I guess everyone was feeling the same exact way that we were feeling. That's awesome. I mean, honestly, when, when music comes from the heart, you get so many people who want to listen to it. Yeah. Like, they can relate to it. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. Why, that's why I love, like, the metal, the punk rock, the rock. Like, that's why I love all those genres. Because the music, a lot of it comes from the heart and soul. And mm -hmm. it's so easy to relate to. Oh, yeah. And so when my friend sent me your stuff, I just was like, yeah, these guys are fucking amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. For real. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, honestly, it's like, it's hard to find good music nowadays. You know, it's not hard. It's easier in the underground <laughs> than it is on mainstream. I think whenever it comes to mainstream, the issue is that everything is sounding so much like the same thing. Yeah. And like a lot of artists, I'm not going to say bands, I'm going to say artists in general are afraid to make that switch because of the fan base that they've created for themselves already. Um, and I think in order to be a, a true creative, a true artist, you have to be able to learn how to adapt and to just create from what you feel and not just what you're used to. I, would yeah. say. I, also, I actually noticed a change in style with your newest track. Let me see if I can find it. Um, the one that was released on... The 26th, back on my bullshit. The style was totally different than Sick of All, all Sick of All, and I like that. I like yeah, that it was it great. was very uh, hip hop influenced on that one. Yeah. Mm. Um, the way how we the way how we thought about that one, we just wanted to we want to fuse so many genres together. But like the main thing that we thought about was like, all right, hip hop's taken from rock. Why don't we take from hip hop and just flip it and make it our own? And that's how, like, Back of My Bullshit and uh, Love Me, actually, um, both were kind of like that, how we kind of did those two things. Yeah, what was the process behind those two songs? Like, what was the meanings? So, Back of My Bullshit is basically, like, when we when we got the okay that quarantine was over for, like, Florida, <laughs> we're like, all right, cool. We're like, it's like we're back on doing what's good for us. We're back on doing the positivity. Like, we're back on like pushing ourselves to the max to strive for greatness, to strive for something that matters. Um, and for Love Me, it was more like a, a, it has two meanings. One meaning is like for the fans to be like, all right, hey guys, like we're trying to do something new. We hope that you still accept us and everything like that. And also it was just like a, a breakup story in a sense. Um, Literally, the, the lyrics are like, just pretend to love me. Like, it's just like, just pretend for a while so I can feel something, so I can feel something worth feeling. You know, when I heard that, I actually did tear up a bit because I went through a really bad breakup and apparently it was a lie from the start and I didn't know it. So mm -hmm. when I heard that part, like, pretend to love me, I'm like, oh, why does this hurt so much? That's how, that's how it went down for me. And we'll be here like, are you fucking, like, it was a lie from the start. I didn't know about it until, like, mm. after the fact. So when I first heard that, I instantly related to that one as well. When she's, like, when my friend sent those tracks over to me, I, the first one I fell in love with was Love Me, because I'm just like, why does this hurt so bad? 
like in a good way. Like that's why I love music. It's like it makes you feel things that you wouldn't expect to feel. It reminds you that you're not alone. Yeah, yeah. That that's our main purpose. Is like make sure that no one feels alone. Like we want people just to like we want that same feeling that we got when we listen to the artists that we listened to growing up. Like we want those feelings of all right, we're like you guys aren't alone. We're not alone. We're all in this together. I love that so much. Like that means the world to the listeners too. I can imagine. Mm-hmm. Like when you make music that that resonates with your listeners on such a deep level, you're gonna have a lot of fans who stick around. Yeah, I mean, we we have some we have some pretty like hardcore fans now, uh, thanks to like again TikTok and stuff like that. And we can we're only seeing it grow. We don't see anything like fall or falter. We're just seeing this fan base grow. We're seeing everyone go hard for it. Like everyone's waiting for the EP to drop. Everyone's loving the songs that are out now. Like, it's like it's like it's the best feeling in the world right now. Imagine and honestly, what you guys have made, you're doing the right thing too. Like, keep it up. I love it. I can I can't wait to see what's next as well. I'm super pumped now. Friday, Friday. That's when our EP comes out, March 19th. Yeah, we let's go. Yeah, Dream Eater comes out on March 19th. Um, it's gonna be two extra songs that no one's heard yet. Uh, one's going to be featuring uh, Ollie Baxter from Broadside, and the other one is just a, a song that we created that's just awesome, that we love. So I look forward to it. I'm now very, very excited. I'm pretty sure we do have, yeah, we do have that video coming out on the 19th as well. So we got a new video coming out, and the EP are coming out. And then stay tuned for, like, a month and some change because we're going to start rolling out the next EP, which we already have done, so. <laughs> nice. You guys are already on top of things then. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're, we're planning on dropping at least three EPs this year alone. Um, we have two done already, so we're, and we're about to go back into the studio in April for the third. You guys are making great progress. This is, That's amazing. Well, my next question is, who would you like to collaborate with in stage? Well, on stage and in studio. Oh, on stage and in studio, like dead or alive, or just like anything. Oh man, I would love to work with Chester Bennington from Lincoln Park. I mean, that's he—he's my idol. I mean, like he's the reason why, like I—I'm doing this style of music. Um, alive, I would probably say MGK. MGK is like literally on fire right now. Definitely. That's awesome. Like, they have some really good stuff. I miss Linkin Park so much. They actually yeah. did a revamp release, I think, this year of one of the older things. I think it was uh, the Hybrid Theory. I Anniversary think I think, I think so. Hmm. Yeah, I, I miss their vocalist, man. Rest in peace. Yeah, that's a uh, tragedy. I got yeah. too many conspiracy theories around that one. Same. Yeah. Like, there's no way he committed suicide. I'm sorry, but that's okay. just bullshit. I mean, like, he was literally talking to, to Mike. I remember because uh, uh, Mike was telling the story. He was, tell- he was talking to Mike and his wife, and they were- he was so happy. He was like, I can't wait to see you guys when you get home and stuff like that. And literally just gone. Yeah, I mean, you know, you know how Hollywood is. And the music industry. Like, I'm sorry, but there's no way he committed suicide. Like, he had seven kids, a loving wife. Like, there's no way. Yeah, there we can go on about that for hours. <laughs> yeah, I can go on about that one for sure. Yes. For really Goodness gracious. All right, my next question is, what is the best piece of advice you were ever given when entering music? Uh, don't stop. Like, and I know it's easy to say, oh, don't stop. But, like, don't when, stop people th- <laughs> when, when people say don't stop, they're meaning, like, when things are down, when you get writer's block, when you feel as if that song didn't hit or you feel as if like people aren't connecting, do not stop because there is going to be at least one person that can hear your music and feel what you're trying to portray. So that's like my advice, like, especially like with the pandemic happening, that was a, really a test for us because a lot of bands stopped. A lot of bands just said, all right, that's it. We're going to wait till the pandemic's done and we're going to start touring again and we're going to start doing shows. But we took the initiative and just started writing, going to the studio and taking the time and perfecting the craft. So that's the advice I, I would give. Don't stop. 
definitely. And I, that's, that's great, too, because a lot of bands, like you mentioned before, have been stopping. It's really sad. Like the pandemic yeah, has been causing a lot of pain, yes, but it doesn't mean don't stop making your music. Mm-hmm. Like there are a lot of bands who also took the initiative, like you guys did, and they're still making stuff out as well to this day, which is great. It's like when the pandemic does hit, well, which it did, it's like don't just stop. Keep finding ways to improve what you're making. Because it's like, just because you can't see each other in person doesn't mean you can't make it online. Exactly. I've, I've seen, I've, I've heard about so many bands making albums over Zoom. Exactly. And like re- recording their own parts like separately and then sending it to a producer to mix. So, I mean, it's possible. Just people just don't know how to continue without shows. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the sad part. Like, I totally do get that. I'm going to cut the opening of shows again in some places. Yeah, I, I've been hearing I've been hearing about that. Uh, I wouldn't... I'm not trusting it just yet. I'm, Neither I'm am I. Careful, so... I'm not either, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, the fans probably won't see us on stage till probably about 2022, unfortunately. Yeah. I mean, hey, rather be safe than sorry, right? Safe than oh, sorry. Yeah. But when we do come out, we're gonna come out with so many bangers. The show's gonna be awesome. Like, I know that for sure. Better hit up Connecticut. I definitely see that shit in a heartbeat. Oof. Who knows? Who knows? It might be. We might be uh, either opening up or touring with uh, a very, very big band. Who knows? Oh, uh, what's oh? Who? Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> I oh, can't my... all the tea. <laughs> fair enough. Fair yeah. enough. After all, if all the tea was dropped here, what would be what world would the surprise for the future be, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. I don't want to end up like Tom Holland and just like spoil everything. Oh, I, I oh, I know the pain. Yeah, dude. Everyone, Tom Holland's the best Spider Man. I'm over here like, what about Toby? Because mm-hmm. Toby was really good too. Like, you cannot leave out the original. Also, so was Andrew Garfield. They they all had. Yeah. Something to bring to the table whenever it came to Spider Man. Um, is all right, so Tom Holland definitely best overall Spider Man Peter Parker just because he fits the role physically yeah. and with his humor. Toby definitely fits that that weird Peter Parker side, and yes. then Andrew Garfield is definitely like the best Spider Man, like. In suit Spider Man. Oh, definitely. Yeah. So yeah, the way I like I was put it. Yeah. The reason I like Toby's personally was because it showed you the hardship of having to live a normal life and being a hero. That's mm-hmm. why I really liked Toby's. Plus that scene with the um from the first one with the uh, with the um food tray that wasn't CGI. He did all that by stunts. It took him 127 times to do it. Yeah, yeah. I like when I read that I was like, no way. Yeah. But, yeah like, it's so crazy. It's dedication, man. Oh yeah. Oh, uh, jeez. We can go on for we can go on about comics for hours. I swear. Yeah, for real. You really. Hey, can. power to the nerds. <laughs> oh goodness, I love seeing creativity like that though. Everywhere, like anime, comics, TV, music. There's so much creativity to go around. Oh yeah. All right. Well, my final question, which was answered a little bit earlier, but I'm still going to ask a little bit of it anyway, is what is the future for Mongolia Park? I butchered the. <laughs> the future for Mag Park. Oh man, uh, the stars. Uh, <laughs> the sky's the limit for us, man. We're not. We're not stopping anytime soon. Uh, Dream Eater comes out Friday. Um, Heart Eater is gonna come out in July, and then our third EP is coming out in October. Hopefully, if everything goes correctly, um, and then hopefully we'll start. Being able to do shows soon, and that's all I can legally say right now. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, totally, all, totally understandable, bro. This has been amazing. Though, like, I love this. I love seeing new bands like this all the time. It's such an honor to see like new groups rising up, oh, especially with one with so much creativity. Like, I love it. Like when I first read the name. Magnolia Park. I thought it was a. I thought it was a reference to uh, Maximo Park, which is an older like rock punk rock band from like the mm-hmm. early two thousands. Like that's kind of how I was getting from it originally. Wow, I gotta look that up. Yeah, yeah they're a that. great group. I first got into them when I was playing an old video game. <laughs> hey, SSX had like the best soundtracks. I swear. 
Yo, SSX and uh, Tony Hawk Pro Skater, like what? Two. 2005. Underground maybe. One had really good music. Yeah. Uh, and American Wasteland had like, great music as well. You know, like when I grew up with SSX, I was playing on tour when I was a kid. There's so much good music on that, like Block Party, Maximo Park, Event, Event Sevenfold. Like, mm-hmm. I got into so many bands that way. And then. Yeah, that- yeah. Honestly, that's how I got in the bands too, like SSX Ed and Tony Hawk, like those two games. Uh, they have such amazing soundtracks. Right? Oh yeah. yeah. And then the music festivals got me into more underground, like Warp Tour and all that crazy shit. Which they are bringing back after COVID. I'm like, yes. Yes, they are, and hopefully we get to play it. <laughs> Dude, that's, for real. It's like a dream of mine is to like play on stage at warp tour not just like the ernie ball stage where like the bands of the cities get to play i'm talking like one of the bigger stages yeah like, with, 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 like pennywise or some 41 or some shit yeah oh I'm, dude oh, if that does happen oh. you better shoot a message and i will head over to that immediately <laughs> oh yeah like that's who knows man uh who knows i live hopefully, for those festivals we can. i live for those I mean, festivals i mean honestly we might shoot our shot. Who knows? We're gonna see like how the how the pandemic continues to roll out now that the uh, vaccines are getting taken care of. Yeah. So, who knows? It's worth a shot, man. Oh yeah. The worst that the, ha- the worst thing that can happen is they say no. That's the worst that can happen. That's true. Honestly, that's when we try again. And knowing Kevin Lyman, that's not gonna be an issue because mm-hmm. he launched careers. Oh yeah. Eminem, freaking Limp Biscuit, Katy Perry, like he launched their careers. Mm-hmm. So it's like I can definitely see it happening for you guys. All right, man. I hope. <laughs> I hope. I want to play World Tour, dude. That's- I'm gonna root you on. Actually, I know a few people who might be able to help with other ideas involving festivals that I've actually been working on currently. Wow. I work with a I work with a label called Gear yeah Records. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm throwing an idea around with them and take into consideration. So I'm gonna try to see if I can throw your name into that one. But a little mm-hmm. music festival for when COVID's over. Hey, once it's over and we're able to go out and actually do things, oh, I would love that. Definitely. And I would love to see you guys live. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to drag my friend who sent me your stuff and be like, let's go see them. <laughs> Knowing her, she'd flip shit. What? Like, yeah, you know, yeah, she's on. so sweet, too. <laughs> like, her and I chat online a lot. She is such a sweet person. And it's like her... We're both metalheads. We both love, like, the same cup of music. Mm-hmm. Her, I'm going to send you this. Please work with them. <laughs> I'm like, I'll do what I can. And then I texted you the same day. And, oof. Yeah, man. I, I always, always love coming out here and talking talking to you guys, man. It's always awesome. Love, I love talking to Arch about their music. It's so much fun. It's, like, it's so rewarding to hear how it all comes together from the artist's perspective. Is yeah, the, I mean, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's like a little insider for everyone who, like, who would want to, like, know I right, have it. How was this made? It wasn't just like, poof, it's on Spotify one day. It's like, how how did they actually go through with it? So Exactly. Like, and plus with music being the reason why I'm still alive, it's always a pleasure to see how it all comes together from different bands. Mm. Like, honestly, and, and being able to hear songs I can relate to, hearing how those come together is even more rewarding. It's just a blast. I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad you you like our stuff enough to to feel that way. I mean, honestly, music like that is empowering as hell. <laughs> I run some online support groups I usually work with, and I send a lot of the music from the bands I work with to them. And I'm getting so much positive responses from everything I've sent over. Mm. Like I go through and see what has like the most impact, and then I just and I just send that track over and see what happens. It's like therapy for them. It's amazing. That's so awesome. beautiful. That's really awesome. Oh, I do what man. I can. Hey, I, I use music. I, use, I can't speak English today. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I have used music to save a total of about 22 lives to this day. And I'm always using music from the artists I find as well. Just sending it over as much as I can. Because music saved me and I wanted to share the love. Hence why I started this up. Mm. It's just been insane. Well, one thing I can say is uh, the next song that we release, well, with the album... Things don't have to suck. That's the title of the song. I definitely want you to listen to that when it comes out and message me what you think about it. 
Oh, without a doubt. I will definitely do that. That one's coming out the 19th, you said, right? The 19th. All right. I will play that song as soon as it comes out, and I will give you a very detailed review on it. Oh, please do. Please I'm do. excited. This is I, I, I think that song, honestly, um, will impact a lot of people. I think it really will. I, I, I honestly can say that that song would definitely make a statement for a lot of people. Well, as soon as it comes out, I will send it out as soon as I listen to it, because now I'm really excited. <laughs> I don't know, dude. My, my headphones, they, they're on my head till, till I wake up when I go to bed, honestly. Music has a day-to-day -day part in my life. Like, I have it on all the time. I trust me. I, I understand that fully. <laughs> uh, I mean, music's an escape for a lot of people, which is oh, yeah. wonderful. Not to mention, you can vent out all your pain through it, which is why I love it. Like, whatever shit you're going through that day, if you can get the headphones on and hear the music that helps, it all just goes away. Better than any therapist I've ever had. Yeah. It's like, I love it. I love it when people are like, oh, what's going on? What's going on inside your head? And you really can't, like, put it into words. But you know a song that can. And you're like, just listen to that song. Exactly. Like, oh, man. I've done a lot to my friends. Are you okay? What's going on? I mean, I can't explain up to hear the song that can. I sent the song over that actually got me started with this journey, and they were like, they're, they're just like, what the f <laughs> it's, a, it's, I mean, it's a really hardcore song, so I mean. Oh, what song was it? Um, It's called Shattered. It's by the band Currents. They're yeah. metalcore. Oh, I, like, I know, I know Currents. I'm trying to remember what. Yeah. Place I Feel Safe is 2017 album. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Okay, I remember. All right, I remember. I remember. All right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, they're a very big inspiration for me. And honestly, like when I first heard them, I was in a very bad place mentally. Mm -hmm. And that song got me right back up on my feet again. It got me to actually think straight again, which was amazing. At that point, I was like, well, let me put it this way. That's where I was. Mm -hmm. And when I heard that song, it got me to clear my head. And then I started this up. Look, man. Things happen for very weird reasons. They do. <laughs> that song came on for a reason. So, like. I know. If I, I get to work with. I would tell people, like, don't take it for granted. Like. Yeah. Utilize it as much as possible. That's what I do. I, I utilize it as much as I can. And I wanted to give back ever since I started this up. And if I could ever work with them, I might legit, like, cry on camera. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I worked with a band who knows them, and you might get me in contact with them, but I'm, I'm hoping that works. The band I worked with was called Savage Hands. Mm -hmm. Awesome guys. The vocalist such an awesome chill dude. Dude, like, there's there's no harm in just, like, blowing up a band's DMs, man. <laughs> yeah, but I don't want to see him like that pushy asshole. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I try to be, like, as played. I'll send, like, one message and leave it as that. Yeah. And I'll be, like, I'll try to be played about it. I send, like a, like, a, like, a detailed message of, like, why why you don't want to do it. And nine times out of 10, dude, they're going to be like, let's just, let's do it. Like, let's go. Yeah. Right. I'm going to try that again today, actually. <laughs> There's no harm in trying. Trust me, Fair they enough. probably have like a lot of messages going through their inbox. So it's like, yeah. I mean, their music is very deep since you and I are both fans of them. Like their shit hits so hard. Mm -hmm. There's so much meaning in their lyrics. I love it. That's one of the big reasons why they're like my number one. Because each song has so much meaning and it's insane like this i wonder like when i'm, when I'm listening to i'm thinking to myself how much shit has the songwriter been through like, yeah like there's <laughs> there's a lot of times where i listen to a song i'm like yo like are you okay exactly <laughs> like you can feel that you can like feel the pain when you're listening to the music Mm -hmm. I think that's a big reason why a lot of people use it to vent out their struggles because they can feel the pain too and it makes them think that we're, they're not alone, which is entirely true. Yeah. Which is why I, I love it. I know it's uh, not, not in the same genre, but like with Juice Work, for example, when I first heard his stuff, I was like, this is a sad dude. Is he all right? <laughs> and then like he kept like going on about like, like the drugs and stuff like that and then he ultimately passed away because of a drug overdose and it's like yeah i was looking into that too it's like sad he was young too yeah he's uh 21 he just turned 21 he's 
he was two years younger than I am. And it, it was so crazy, dude, because I was just like, so you're saying you're in the studio with all these people. They hear these lyrics and no one tried to make sure you're good. Like, no one. It's sad. It's sad. Like, this is super weird. I like, I hope I like, that's why, like, for me, I keep my circle super small. Um, but like, for situations like that, like, you can write songs that really mean something to you, like that you want to get those emotions out. But if no one's checking on you while you're doing that, man, it's, it's not good. Definitely. Not good. Like when I first heard Shattered and when I heard the new one Monsters by them, I'm over here like, are you okay? Because like a lot of the shit that he described is shit I went through. So I instantly like resonated with it. But I'm over here like, do you need a hug? <laughs> Man, for real, for real, God. so heartbreaking. Because when you listen to like good music like that, that really synchronizes. The first thing I think of is, is this artist okay? Because when I think when I'm listening to it, I know the pain of it because I go through a lot of similar stuff. When I'm listening to certain music, like when a song makes me cry, I'm instantly thinking, are they okay too? <laughs> Ugh. That's how I felt with Trusted Benetton. Like it was like apart for a while. I was like. Is he good? <laughs> then, like, real. I'll, then like I started looking into interviews that they've done. It's like, oh, he literally has depression. Like it's a really bad, he's really in a bad place. Like what? <laughs> and like no one's trying to help him? Come on now. Oh, I mean a lot of people, like a lot of his whole band tried to help him. Well, it was like, yeah. But the thing is, like when you're in a battle with yourself. It's super hard to get out of that. Well, I know my fair share of that one. I agree. Mm, it's so. really hard. Like, I had a battle of depression for a long time. I still do, but it's not as bad as it used to be. Mm. So I can definitely feel that. Like, when you're, when, you're, when, you're, when, you're, when you're at war with yourself, it is so hard to get through it. And it's hard to even ask for help. So it's like, that's where music came in for me. I never asked for help, and music was what helped me. Yeah, it's like, Something where you can just put your headphones on and turn the world off. Exactly. My, my favorite little saying, world off, music on. Mm-hmm. Without music, I don't know where I'd be right now, honestly. I mean, that can, that can be said for a lot of people, myself included. Like, for real, I wouldn't. All I've known was, is music. <laughs> Music can be such a peaceful thing. It can also be such a strong thing, too. Yeah. Bring people together. Mm-hmm. Like, God, so many songs, man. So many. So much music. Honestly. You got old stuff from, like, Bring Me Back, Bring Me the Horizon, like, Can You Feel My Heart? Shit like that. It's, like, there's so much music. <laughs> oh, my There's God. so much music that can symbolize so much deep shit. And so many people don't know about it because they don't pay attention to it. It's yeah, so like, come on, even in lyrics, I'm sorry, so was, I'm sorry, lover, I'm sorry, brother, forgive me, father, I love you, mother. For real. Can you hear the silence? Can you feel the dark? Can you fix the broken? Can you feel my heart? Like, my favorite set of lyrics, well, one that I really resonated with was, um, I long for the feeling to not feel at all. When I first heard that, I was like, oh. I was like in tears. <laughs> Cause that song, that whole song hits. Don't get me wrong. It's just when that hit, when that certain lyric went off, like the whole thing just sunk right in. Yeah, like when I first heard that lyric, I was like, "What? What?" No. Like, like on a musical standpoint, I was like, "Oh, he's a genius." And I'm like, on a on a like a mental standpoint, I was like. Are you okay? <laughs> exactly. Uh, and not everyone's using that for memes. It's like, come on now. It's so sad. TikTok, man. <laughs> I know. That's all I can say. It, TikTok. TikTok either makes everything a joke or cancels everything. So. And that's why I actually don't usually use that. I'm over here like, why is cancer culture so cancer? Oh, yeah. Cancer culture is... 
the most cancerous thing I think I have ever seen as a uh, society. Honestly. Dude, cancel culture fucked over Pepe, Pepe Le Pew from Cartoon Network. Pepe Le Pew, Aristocats, Peter Pan, Mr. Potato Head. They tried with Eminem and failed. Uh, Abraham Lincoln, George Washington. Uh, but they kept Cardi B. Just said. And Tony Lopez. It's it's disappointing. Dude, it reminds me if, if ghost stories came out now. Oh, you know what I'm talking about? That um mm-hmm. with a dub was comedy gold. Dude, I always I always think about certain things. I'm like, man, if these things were to come back, these things were to come out now, they wouldn't last as long as they did back in the For day. For real. Like, when I first watched Ghost Stories, I'm over here thinking to myself, if this shit came out today, a lot of people will be pissed. Like, I'm, I'm sitting here like, what's next, Power Rangers? Oh, I hope not. I hope not. You know they're going to try. Yeah. I mean, they took it off Netflix already because of the deal with Saban fell through. Yep. But it, wait, just, just let them um, let them discover the first season of Power Rangers. It got canceled. For re- That's a sad thing. It's like... They don't understand. The time back then was different. Everyone wasn't a snowflake. <laughs> and it's like, there was a lot of good stuff back then. Like, when I first watched Ghost Stories, that shit was hilarious. I mean, like, when you look at the first season of Power Rangers, it was a very racist season. It, it was. You got the Asian girl as a yellow ranger. You got the black guy as the black ranger. And he's also the dancing comedy relief. <laughs> so and she's the smart techie person. I'm just like, oh god, this is going down so fast. Hey Zordon, you're a fucking racist. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> like for real. And then, but they made it better. So the next one, they were like, all right, cool. We're gonna have the black guy be the Red Ranger. Equality. We're good. Exactly. <laughs> <sighs> and then you got things like um. Oh, I can't think of the top of my head. Zach and Cody, where they gave you a smart blonde and a dumb Asian. Oh, yeah, they flipped that. And I was like, you know, that's genius. It was. That's genius. We can't call you racist for this because that's genius. It's hilarious. It is. It's great. <laughs> like, you're literally going against each stereotype. Uh, I miss old TV. Whatever happened in those days. I mean, Jerry was also fucking amazing. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, back in the day, SpongeBob didn't have a sexuality. They decided to put one on him now. Which makes no sense whatsoever. Patrick didn't have his own TV show. Uh, Dan Snyder wasn't outed yet as being just a very bad person. Uh, TV is falling apart. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Oh, yeah. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen in the next, like year or two whenever it comes to TV. Especially whenever it comes to, like, Nickelodeon, Disney, Cartoon Network-style TV. Oh, don't get me started on Disney. Canceling the Star Wars shit has been so annoying. Well, like which with, one was it? Uh, Mandalorian with that whole um, Gina thing that went down. Oh, yeah. And then right after, they canceled Paw Patrol. They canceled Paw Patrol? Why the hell? It's a kid show, isn't it? Yeah, but they canceled it for something. I forgot what it was. Goodness. Yeah, I forgot why they canceled uh, Paw Patrol. But I was like, are you are you serious? I, actually, I'm going to look that up right now really fast. I feel like cancel culture is just people who've like lost their logic. They're just canceling anything. Honestly, it's so sad. Ugh. I'm over here, like, watching stuff from, like, the 90s and early 2000s because it's, like, it's still actually good. Yeah, there's no, um, there's no filter because they wanted it to seem real with a lot of things. And now it's like, oh, we have to have, we have to make sure that this is a bubble around sensitivity. So annoying. Like the best way I can put it. <laughs> Why well, I still love South Park. They give no fucks. Yeah, like South Park, Family Guy, like shows like that. They're just like, we don't care. And that's why I love them still. It's like they just don't give a fuck. 
It's like, you can't cancel us. Like, we're uncancelable. Like, we, we've we tried already. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we tried in each generation before you. And it didn't work. <laughs> Honestly, like, this, a lot of this reminds me of George Carlin. Because, have you heard of him? He was a comedian. Yeah. yeah. I love his stuff. Rest in peace, George. If you, okay. If you were still alive, he would be having a field day right now. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. Shit. Because his jokes were, they're more like logical, like, they're logical thinking, really. Yeah, they're very, uh, yeah, they're very intellectual, intellectual jokes that he, that he said. Yeah. Um, he used the old line, make the truth funny or else they'll kill you. And boy, did he make the truth hilarious. Mm-hmm. Uh, rest in peace, man. He was a legend. That's also, I, that's also why I love Dave Chappelle. He's he's one of those people who are like, you can't cancel me. Isn't he the one who did gotcha bitch? Mm-hmm. Uh classic. Like like he like people really can't cancel Dave Chappelle because like I remember one time uh I think it was like Azalea Banks said something to try and like destroy his marriage. He literally made a whole comedy special. It was like, well. I thought I could go my whole career without this, but some crazy <laughs> decided to try and come for me. And for that, I say, thank you. You just hey, gave me another $10 million. <laughs> exactly. It gives them something to work off of. <laughs> um, like when, I, when I saw that, I was like, Azalea Banks, you're stupid. You're, you're so stupid. Why would you do this? Like... Uh. You know, it's sad. It's like, just leave the guy alone. Goodness. I, s- I swear, a few years from now, we're, we're going to go to a museum. We're going to see a picture of a stand comedian. And it's it's going to say comedy and death 2020-something. And that's the year comedy died. Because everyone was cancel culture. Yeah, I mean, Slapstick's already dead. Sadly. Um, like, dark humor's basically dead. <laughs> um, that's bad for me, because my humor is morbid. I love dark humor jokes, but Dang. I can't say them. I can't. Like, I know. It's like you can't say them on camera because everyone's gonna get pissed. Yeah, like I'm like the one person like in the band that like has the dark humor, and everyone's just like, you can't say that. You can't. Dark no. Humor is amazing. No, no. it's so <laughs> so good. I mean, honestly, like the best humor is based off of some pretty morbid stuff. Like people don't get that. Mm-hmm. Remember the old saying: "It's funny because it's true." Like, oh, yeah. that's what it is. It's funny, and it's true, because you can laugh at something that's pretty fucking morbid, but the humor is still there. Oh, jeez. Like, dark humor is so fun. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, a, it's such a fun time. <laughs> it really is. Especially when you're playing Cards Against Humanity. Yes. Yes. That's where it's, like, completely hilarious the entire time. No one questions when you play Cards Against Humanity. As soon as you take the cards away, everyone starts questioning. <laughs> That's so true. But you get like some of the best moments possible doing that. Oh yeah. Oh uh, man, it takes me back. Oh, I missed that game. I actually, I'm gonna be doing the online version on a stream with some buds soon for our channel. We're gonna start doing comedy segments all all around Cards Against Humanity. Ooh. That would be hilarious. I would, I would love, yeah. I would love to see that. That's and a lot awesome. of us are more on the mentally messed up side, so it's gonna be fucking hilarious. Normally, um, I, I did this like a couple of times. Um, I would play Call of Duty with a bunch of friends, and it would just be us in the in the arena, and we say, "All right, guys, you laugh, you get shot," and then you just like the, let's say like the most messed up dark humor jokes you can think of. It's whoever laughs dies. <laughs> I love it. It's like spin the bottle. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, man. Uh, what happened to humor, honestly? Oh, it died when COVID started. A lot more died before that. I mean, <laughs> I didn't mean to say that. Jesus. Oh. <laughs> well, there's, there's some dark humor right there. Jesus. Uh, I mean, hey, it's funny because it's morbid. Yep. It's also funny because it's true. <laughs> exactly. Mm-hmm. 
Dude, I used to play a game like that a lot similar in GTA. It's like if you laugh, you die. And I'm over here, I'm over here like dressed up as a cat with an RPG. I'm like, hey, bitch. They started <laughs> laughing. I pulled them up. Oh, um, classic. Goodness gracious. I wish, man. I really wish. I wish people would just like not be as sensitive as, as you know, they were that they are now. It's like, yeah. There's no point. It's I'm like kidding. whatever happened. It's like whatever happened to keep your pain to yourself and let it go. Like whatever happened to that. Uh, Gen Z. <laughs> Sadly, yeah, that's probably the most accurate way to put it. Ugh. Gen Z. If I had to, if I had to, like really, like pinpoint that. I'm sorry, guys, but. Gen Z. <laughs> yeah, I mean, some aren't like that. Some are, but it's like a mixed pot at this point. No, yeah, exactly. Like, some aren't like that. But then you have, like, that giant group that are. They're really they, noticeable. They're, they're really noticeable, too. The fucking rainbow hair. Not rainbow hair. Um, mm-hmm. Like, the light hair color dye, the um, the signs and shit. Like, the like, little protest group is like, yeah, that's, that's real apparent. Yeah. Mm. Uh, like they make themselves stand out on purpose and it's like oh I wonder what this is going to be about and <laughs> you already know just how they look that's a like, sad thing like the weird thing about it um, is like they cancel like the most stupid things like they canceled the laugh the cry laughing emoji they actually they actually got canceled yeah they they, they they called it too old bruh and they also canceled skinny jeans and side parts and hair I'll never understand this generation. The sad thing is, I'm technically a part of it since I'm 1997, but yeah, I, li- I was raised more old school. Like, I grew up with old stuff like Tom and Jerry, old school music, war shows from the 60s. Let's <laughs> <laughs> look like vinyl. But no, it's like, I grew up with a lot of old stuff, hence why I have more of the older mindset. Yeah. And it's like, I'm so glad I'm not part of this. I'm glad I'm not part of that part of the generation. <laughs> uh it's sad. I mean, I know what's gonna happen. A lot of this is stuff is gonna get canceled. I give it like a few months, and then people are gonna forget that it's canceled, and then everything's gonna come back. Probably. Tell me how it works. Yeah. Like, I'm. I said this is. Uh, I think one Gen Z I was like, I'm sorry, you can't cancel me when all you do is eat Tide Pods. I forgot that was a phase too. Mm-hmm. I just remembered that. It's like, why? Why would didn't some kids like die from that or some shit? Like, yeah, yeah, a few people did actually. It's like, oh yeah, um, you guys ate Tide Pods after we really did the whole bleach thing. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, at least their insides are clean. They just won't live to see it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Won't, yeah. Live, won't live to see that colon get cleaned. <laughs> <laughs> I will never understand their logic, honestly. See, for me, I just like I just like peace and quiet. I don't like to deal with any of that stuff, so I just keep to myself usually. Mm. But it's like, cancel culture has been pissing me off lately. Because they're canceling so much good shit. And in the world of anime, oh, don't get me started, Oh my god, I'm, I'm just, I'm afraid of what's going to get canceled next. I already know something's going to get canceled next. I just don't know. I, I can't pinpoint what it could be. Neither can I. I just, it's like you're just, you're just hoping for like the lowest blow possible, not something that's going to be like a big, big majorly affected. You're hoping it's something small, but you don't know. It's like you're preparing for the worst. Ugh, that's a pain. Ugh. I'm oh. over here like, you guys are going to cancel this, but yeah, did you realize this existed? Honestly. Like, people are out here trying to cancel some new anime, because it's like, oh no, there's a perverted scene. Have you heard of Boku no Pink? Right, oh my god. That shit is cancerous as hell. Not even that, like, have you not seen the first series of Naruto? Or oh, Dragon Ball? Exactly, and it got better, too, after a while. Like, they did improve. Like, or... One Piece or any of the big animes, you there's a lot of perverted scenes in there. You're just exactly. like exactly <clears throat> high school DXB. 
Like, is, is this... Are you sure we're still watching anime or are we watching hentai? Exactly. Like... Especially, like, the early 2000s shit. Like, you can see it a lot. Dude, it's so bad. It's so bad. It's not thinking it's bad, but, but the animation style is so beautiful because of how they did it back then. Right? It's like, all right, I like, I can, I can withstand this. And then you're like, wait, what did I just watch? Did he do <laughs> No. Like, while I was watching Gundam Wing, I was, like, re-watching it again, and I forgot how beautiful the animation was. Like, that's how I, that's how it felt with, uh, Zatch Bell. Oh, that was so good. Yeah, Zatch Bell and Prince of Tennis. I started re-watching those two. It was like, wow. He's really good, but you know, it they were both on Toonami, so I knew it wasn't gonna last long. Yeah, unfortunately. So, like that, and then Yu Yu Hakusho is another good one that was just oh, really Hakusho, done. Amazing. And then Inuyasha, yeah. like you got like you got the classics. <laughs> like some some new animes are really good. Don't get me wrong. It's just that yeah. old school art style is look. It just looks superior. Because, like, they're all perfectionists back then. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, you watch I mean, stuff like, like Gundam, the detail work is insane. It's because you didn't have, like, the, uh, the, the technology that you have now to where you're like, all right, cool, we can, we can mess up. It's fine. You can just redo it. Back then, it's like, if you mess up, you have to start all over. Please yeah. don't mess up. <laughs> exactly. And, like, you got things like Trigun, which had beautiful detail. And then you got weird shit coming out today that looks like it's like a, like looks like looks half ass. Mm -hmm. uh, it's so sad. Like I'm watching like I like to watch like, a lot of unknown stuff too, like a lot of lesser known, not very popular animes, like stuff yeah. that was never really given the spotlight, like like those small one season series. And a lot of them are super nice and super cute. It's like stories are really good. The art style is amazing. Yet there's not many people watching it. It's so sad. Oh man, you gotta check out uh, Angel Beats. Oh, don't get me started on that one. Angel Beats is so good. It's one of it my favorite amazing. animes. Like, Angel Beats, Soul Eater. Oh, Soul Eater. I actually just got that one in the mail recently, because I like to collect like the physical copies, too. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm the kind of guy who prepares if the internet fucks up. I prepare for that. <laughs> so I collect physical copies of anime, too. And mm -hmm. it's like, oh, my goodness. Soul Eater was so good. It still lives up to its name, too, which is amazing. Yeah. Full Metal Alchemist was great, too. Brotherhood was really good. Fun fact about uh, Soul Eater, uh, same creator is creating Fire Force right now. And oh. then there's, there's still remnants of Soul Eater in Fire Force. And it's like... I could tell a little bit with the art style. I did see a little bit of that. Because the art style back. was fairly similar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Soul Eater was amazing, honestly. The first yeah. episode, the, the dad just gets cried up three times. Man. The Maka and Soul. Maka and Soul. Definitely, Soul Eater is definitely in my top. For real. Top 10. Definitely. Top 10. To yeah, Tokyo Ghoul was good, too. I love how they actually found and finished that one up. The story was amazing. I actually yeah. have one of the props from the show I use for cosplay a lot. I have the, the scythe from that kid, Juzo. I have, a life I have like a life-size version of the scythe. Well, almost life-size. It's 10, foot, 10 feet tall. See, I love the first two seasons. The last yeah, two like, things kind of the last thing was weird because the animation style completely changed as well, and I was like, I don't like it. Yeah, that's how it was like, too. Like, if you would have kept the same style, I would have been okay with this. Yeah, change the entire style. Um, they did. Um, I I pray they don't do that with Bleach. I really hope they don't do that with Bleach. Because the final art comes out this year. Yeah, I keep I keep seeing that. And I keep trying to figure out. All right, when is it gonna drop? When is it gonna happen? Damn! No so, like, I actually I binged all of Bleach in like three weeks just preparing for this. Like I'm waiting for them to be like, all right, here is an actual date. Like, when is it coming out? <laughs> well, I did hear they're ending. Um, what was it, Black Clover? Because they're gonna start up on Bleach. I thought it was because they were like, all right, it's it's basically doing what Bleach did and filled itself with fillers. Yeah, um, well, there's two reasons. It's getting close to the manga ending, and they also want to start Bleach up. That's also another reason. I was reading into it. Hmm. I was just I was just looking it up, and like the first thing that says it was March second. It's like is that out? I would have known if it was out. Same. I would have been like, oh really? What the fuck is it? 
And I want to know how they're going to explain the time jump. Same. Because they're probably, probably going to do another filler or some shit. Uh, I'm just excited to finally see Ichigo's mom's backstory. I'm really excited for that. His mom's backstory, Kenpachi's Bankai, Ichigo's true Bankai. Udahara's Bankai. Udahara's Bankai. Udahara's Bankai. Like, there's so much to see. Like, Hitsugaya actually, actually growing up and not Real. a midget. <laughs> <Not Bridget>. uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Rangiku's actually like evolved, like Orihime and Ichigo being together is like all this stuff has yeah. to happen in literally this one season. <laughs> I, I keep forgetting that one guy's name, the one who has the um, flower one as well. I keep forgetting his name. He always wears a hat and he has the two swords. Uh, not Murahara. He gets drunk a lot. Okay, no. Uh, I forgot his name. I I I, I, I know when I'll see him. It's from He's the captain family. of the captain of the second squad. Second, third squad. Third squad. Yeah. The, the more analytic one is the uh, captain. Of the second one. Yeah, because he's he's releasing his bankai too. Yeah. Uh... Which I'm really excited for. It is not Yamamoto. Shinsui Kiro. Shinsui, yeah, Shinsui. I'm excited to see that too. Like we were waiting on their bankais for like the longest time. Now I'm like, yes, finally, we can actually and, see it. And I think but, we're also getting the bankai of the one who um, uses the Reaper one, the one with the chains. Uh, He's a lieutenant. With the six nine, with the sixty nine on his um, like I think right side, left side of his face or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're gonna see his bankai, which I'm super pumped for. Yeah, we see Grimjow come back. Oh, I'm so ready for and Nell as well. Nell as well. Um, so the spiders aren't done yet. So I'm like, how are you gonna fit all of this stuff into one season? This must be a very long season. This is gonna be a big. It has arc. to be a very long season. Definitely. Like, if it's like a whole, oh, we're going to do 20 episodes, like, that's not enough. That's not enough at all. I'm sorry, but that's at least maybe 100, maybe more. Yeah. Dude, it has it has to. It's the only way. It literally has to be. Because if they try and shortchange everything, it's like... It's going to mess it up. Start off in the middle of the fight with Yamamoto and um, Yoe. The, the and Quincy like, dude, yeah. It's almost like that's, that's literally the only way. And then, like, you find out that Ichigo is Quincy and everything is like... I feel like Ichigo is just like that jack of all trades. Yeah, I mean, he's he's basically like they basically were just put as he's everything. He is oh. literally everything. He's full bring, uh, hollow Shinigami, Quincy human. And then I have to forget the power that he got from hell. <laughs> There's that. Uh, bounce powers. Yep. Like, what what else? Do you need Ichigo? Why do you have everything? Not to mention the final, the final Getsuga. But yeah, that shit was nuts. Uh, yeah, because when I finished writing, reading the manga, and I was like, wait, um, Getsuga isn't really his actual one guy? Hmm, Who the hell is his one guy? And then you find out that it's literally the white Ichigo, and you're just like, what? So you're saying that you're his Quincy powers, and you're his what? <laughs> imagine to have imagine to have to leave all those voices in your head. You got the you got you got the Zanpakuto, you got the bloody hollow. It's like you go mad. It's like literally. So when I thought about, it, I was like, "Wow, Gentsuga Tensei is literally Uriyo's powers in a sword." That's basically how how to how to put it. It's like for real. Uriyo's power. Ichigo sword attack. Honestly. Oh, man. There's so many good animes, too. Like, Claymore was pretty good. It's an, it's, a lesson, it's more of a lesser-known one. Yeah. Uh, Parasite was all right. Parasite was decent, yeah. Psychopaths was amazing. I love Psychopaths. Oh, man. Don't get me started on Psychopaths. You got Black Lagoon. All oh, the detail work for Black Lagoon was beautiful. I will yeah. admit, for a newer one, well, not so new, but newer... The art style was amazing. I love what they did with the island scene, like on the first episode, 
Mm-hmm. The detail was gorgeous. And then you got the Terminator fucking me. It's like, I wish that there was a lot of animes that took the time. Well, anime, anime studios. Yeah. To take the time to, like, kind of do, like, how they did with, like, the Yu Hakusho and all that, where they just sit down and be like, all right, guys, let's get as detailed as possible. For real. Because those, yeah, like, those are some of the best classics. Oh, yeah. Then I watched, like, uh, God of High School. Uh, I've been meaning to start that one. And I love the style. Um, I love the art style of it. I'm just like, there's more. And I, I'm hoping that there's a second season that comes because... <clears throat> no game, no life. There, 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 there needs to be. That's all I can say. There needs to be. No game, no life. Like, come on, release season two! That's why, like, like lately, I've just been, like, avoiding animes that have one season. With a cliffhanger? Because I'm like, all right, cool. Yeah, because I already know. All right, cool. If the fan base loves it, they're going to get a second season. But we didn't have to wait for it for a very long time. Like, so Devil's a like, part-timer. Right. They're finally getting another, another season. It was announced. I'm like, yes. Jesus. Yeah, the That's second season. For. I was out for years. Almost seven years. That was a part time. Wow. That was a funny one. And they finally just got the okay for another season. I'm over here like, took you guys long enough. Mm-hmm. The Dead Man Wonderland, I'm always going to say mad at because I loved it so much, but they just cut it off after season one. I'm like, oh, come on. Um, what's one? There's an, there is an anime that I've watched that was so good, and I was like, I'm not watching a second season, a third, uh, no, third season. It was a uh, Sword Art Online. So that was a good one. Um, after the second season, I stopped watching it. Then I, I wanted to know what people were thinking about the third and the fourth one, and everyone was like, "No, this isn't good." I was like, "Oh, good, thank you." So I'm not going to tarnish my view of Sword Art Online. Exactly. Please. I was gonna yeah, because the new seasons did fall apart a bit. I will admit that. I watched it. I was disappointed a bit. I did. A, I did hear the last season kind of went back to the first season roots. It did. And that's what. That's why I didn't like it. It, it did go back to the roots, which was nice. So. Huh. Yeah. Oh goodness, we can go on for hours. About this. Oh yeah, dude. I'm. I'm invested in anime. I'm invested. Dude, same. Oh, I got I, I first started anime when I was like middle school. I dragged my friend along to anime club because he never heard of anime in his life, and mm-hmm. I got him. The first anime I got him to watch was Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, and he fucking fell in love. Demon Slayer was so good too. Oh, uh, Demon Slayer was good. Uh, They're getting a new season and a new movie in like two years or some shit. The new season's coming out sooner though, which is nice. I haven't seen the actual Demon Slayer movie or the My Hero movie yet. Yeah, I need, I need to. My Hero was good. Actually, my friend and I went to Anime Boston a few years back. He met the um, English dub actor for um, Deku. And he was in his Deku costume. <laughs> so it was, the, it was the funniest thing. His eyes just lit up. It was the funniest thing ever. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, mind you, you're wearing Deku's cosplay, and you actually meet the actor for Deku at the same time. It's like, that's just unforgettable. Ooh. Oh, goodness. Anime is such a lovely thing. Oh, I have man. friends who have never watched it. They go, why do you watch it? I'm like, have you seen the worlds that these shows take place in? <sighs> yeah. <laughs> then Jujutsu Kaisen is really good. I'm really getting into that one. I just finished it. <laughs> nice. Like, literally an hour before this, I finished the last episode that's available. <laughs> I need to watch it. No spoilers. So good. <laughs> oh, I could imagine. <laughs> I, I I binged it. I started yesterday and I just finished it. <laughs> Nambaka was pretty funny too. The prison mm-hmm. one. I love the. They went all out with the colors. I loved it. Yeah, it was very vibrant. I liked it. Oh man, it's I nice want... seeing shows do that. One hundred, it's hundred to come back. Yeah, I'm still waiting on that. I'm still waiting for them to get okay for a new season because they didn't leave off on a cliffhanger a bit. Yeah, they left off with um, wow, I have I forgot his name, the reverse of Deku. Not wow, Deku uh, of Gon basically. <laughs> they're basically the same. <laughs> uh, the reverse of Gon. Uh, that's how they kind of left it. Uh, Hunter, Hunter, they're getting a new season too. Actually, from what I heard, I'm over here like. It's Hunter Hunter. They, they finished that shit up a while ago. 
Yes, I think 2011. Yeah, apparently they're giving it another season. Which I'm like, what are they going to do? What are they going to use for it? Because technically Hunter Hunter already finished. Yeah, the manga yeah, the manga is completely finished. I know that. Mm. Now let's have to do the uh, anime uh, that adaptation of it. Ah, uh, fair enough. Oh boy. I love I love manga and anime. It's like it's fun to see what they leave out in the show and you can you can find in the manga. It's so nice. I so I was reading up on the My Hero uh, manga versus the uh anime and they were like, Yeah, uh Deku's kind of a savage in the manga and he's just a crybaby in the anime. And I was like, No way. Then I read a few chapters, I was like, Whoa. Wow. Why are they doing this to my dog? <laughs> He's such a savage. He is. I'm over here like, are you guys fucking kidding? Oh my god. Oh jeez. And with Tokyo Ghoul, they left they, they out a lot of shit. Right, uh, the dragon? Hmm? Like Tanaki being the dragon? Yeah, I was like, what the fuck, guys? Like, one of the most badass moments. You leave out. For what? Honestly, I don't get it at all. That's why I read manga and watch the anime kind of hard to see what the hell they left out. That's that's honestly what I do with um with comics, especially whenever it comes out to like the CW shows and then any movie that comes out, animated movie for DC. I don't watch the animated Marvel movies because they're always trash. That's fair. Uh Goodness, I, I miss the old. I miss the days where they put so much detail into the work. Like some anime still do that. Don't get me wrong, but the old school ones, the art styles were gorgeous. It was, especially for like 2001 to like 2006, a lot of those had some nice art styles, like the 90s ones too. You cannot leave out the 90s. Do like a Megas XLR. That was so good. Which one? Megas XLR. Oh yes. So a lot of people forget that that show even existed. Same with March and Awakens Romance. That's an old one. You've I, heard of that one? I haven't heard of that in years. I actually just got my hands on all the manga and the um the Japanese subtitled English subtitled um like DVD set. It took me seven years to find all of it. Jeez. Where yeah, because like I was a big fan of the old school animes, and not many people know it exists. And I'm like, it had 102 episodes. The fuck. So I was able to find all 15 manga, cha- well, all 15 volumes, and then I got the DVD sets. I'm most like, oh, finally. I'm so mad they cut the dub halfway through. So mad about that. Because the dub was really good. I mean, but compared to what it, what it was going up against at that time, it was like... That's fair. It was going up a lot of heavy hitters, so it's like... I was I'm, glad, I'm much glad the Japanese at least really, finished it. Yeah. We still had the big three that was yep. um that was prominent at that time. Yeah, Bleach, Naruto, One Piece. Mm-hmm. And then you had um the ending of the Yu Hakusho show was around that same time. Yeah. Like everything was kind of like ending and beginning around there. So same. Actually, remember Chimera from Watching Awakened Romance, the one with the green hair and the spikes? Yes. Give me a second. Let me grab this. Holy shit. Handmade. Well, some friends of mine out of Colorado made it for me. They use clay and everything. Oh, that's super sick. I know. They got a lot oh, of the teeth. The only thing that didn't be, that they got off was like uh, how the teeth are like inward when it should be facing outwards, but I love it either way. Because um, like they made this all by hand. I'm just like, I can, I, I love it. That's I was trying to work on the cosplay for her, but I haven't had time to make the actual, like the monster arm props. I haven't had time to do those. Like you got, you got like the flesh teeth hand, then you got the bone one. Oh, uh, her outfit was awesome. How long do you think it um would take you to actually make those? Well, with lack of material right now, it's gonna take me a while. I'm trying to get a three D printer to make my life easier. Cause I have a lot. Of, I have a friends who do three D printing, and it's like I'm gonna try to get my own to get my own stuff started up and work on that. Cause that would be insane. And you got Halloween, the motherfucker on a crucifix. I'm like Jesus. <laughs> I love his design though. Yeah, his design is very sick, but like. When you look at the whole meaning of it, you're like, dang, that's dark. <laughs> it is. Uh, then you got Ash, who's like, I'm going to come apart now and just fucking fly over with his limbs. 
to goodness. That wasn't very that was a very interesting series. I loved it. I think that series paved the way for a lot of newer stuff though. It did. I, I just the aspect of it was amazing. Kid goes to New World because of Dream and then he meets all these fun things. Mm. And the, the adventure just starts from there. Uh, like there are so many people who don't know about his existence and it's so sad. It was really good. Man, sometimes I would like see like a clip of it on Facebook. Because I'm a part of this anime group and they just kind of like put things out. Ooh, add me in that. I want to see that. I, I'm a big anime nerd. Well, obviously I'm an anime nerd. We were talking about anime for almost an hour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I definitely, I definitely add you for sure. All right, I'll send over my name later. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. man. Yeah, it's it's so cool to see all like the old school anime stuff and like very obscure anime that people don't even know exists. I'm saying, yeah, like Hanayuki Omei Team. That was a funny one. Mm. The 20 year anniversary comes up April 1st, so it's yeah, it was from 2001. It was a romantic comedy harem. It was an interesting one. Then there was um, this, this, this is another old one, Chibi Vampire Karen, that love story one. Uh, my brother watched that one. My it brother watched that one. That was a good one. I love those old. I love those old romantic comedy. Yeah, the emo motherfucker loves romantic comedies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the hypocrisy! <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's like those shows were sweet. They had a lot going with them. Oh yeah. Now you have things like Food Wars. <laughs> Don't get me started on Food Wars. You I'm over here like, what kind of crap did you smoke when you made that one? Right? Like, like, oh, you must you must have hung out with Stephen King and did shrooms or something with him to come up with this shit. Like, what in the world were you thinking? Thinking <laughs> with shrooms. Yeah, I could definitely see that because that was a weird one. I'm over here like, what the fuck? Uh, and then there's those really bad ones that should never have existed, <laughs> like fucking Boku no Biku and etc. I know who I feel bad for the ones who had to animate that. Right? I'm well, over like, here like, I'm over here thinking to myself, I am so sorry for you. Bro, like they, they, I already know they're probably like, I hate my life. I hate it. I hate it so much right now. <laughs> I could imagine. I, I must know. I'm thinking, who the hell even thought of this? I'm sorry, but what? I'm sorry, but this, this, ain't, this ain't Netflix's cuties. This is much worse. Uh, oh, I God. hope that never gets a live action. Dude, I told I told someone, and they were like, "Bro, why would you even say this?" I was like, "Bro, I would rather watch Black Butler." Same. The movie was good though for Black Butler. I haven't seen it. Uh, haven't it's seen it's it. where um, the Undertaker really lets out his power there. See, like, I'm just like, I'm very iffy on. On Black Butler. Yeah, it I, was I an how, interesting one. I don't know how to truly feel about Black Butler. Right? You no, know, you got like badasses like Sebastian, you got dumbasses like Grill. It's like, it's a, it's a trip. Oh, yeah. I mean, one of my friends, I, I got into like a few episodes of it in the beginning because one of my friends is like, no, just, just watch this. Just see what happens. Just watch it. I was like, what is it about? Because you watch weird things. <laughs> and literally, they're just like, just watch it. It's like, no, tell me what it's about first. <laughs> and they would not tell me. And I was like, you know what? I'm not going to Google this. I'm just going to watch it. And then I started watching it. And I looked at them. And I was like, this is the, uh, this is the category of weird. Why? Oh, <laughs> uh, goodness. There are some animes out there that probably never should have existed. There, actually, you know what's funny? There was one anime. I was, I was looking up on the list last night. Worst animes to ever exist. There is one. I have to look up the name of it. It was me and Adobe Flash. And I'm over here like, please don't tell me it's professional. Actually, I'll look up the name right now so I can let you know. And the sad thing is the studio actually used Adobe Flash to make this. I'm like, no wonder it sucked ass. This was, this was made in 2006. And Ooh. I'm over here thinking to myself, why would you use Adobe Flash to make an anime? I'm sorry, but that has no logic. I'm sorry, but where was your logic with that? What studio was it? I mean, I actually do not know. I have to look into it more. But it was called um, Anoka, H-A-N-O-K-A. They Anoka. used 
it was a 12 episode series. I was getting nauseous because of it. It was all Adobe Flash. I'm like, this is a really shit video game. Bro. Hmm. Then there was one called Ice. I'm like, I'm not watching this. I'm over here like the first section in a world without men. I'm like, if I'm going to jump on this one, you'll love it. You but no. start watching it, just an uh, iceberg melting the entire time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of bad animes that never should have existed. There's one of reviews looking at. It was literally like, I'm sorry, but this was some crack out shit. <laughs> I'm over here like, that, that was an actual review. <laughs> and I'm over here, it's, I'll send you the name of it. I'll send you the name of the actual series later. It's morbid as fuck. It's not even that good. And I'm over here like, the guy literally wrote, this is what happens when you smoke crack and do much. <laughs> that was from an actual reviewer. And I'm over here like, oh, this is going to be cancer. I'm not even going to watch it. Oh, this one give me that rare heart disease that Goku had. <laughs> Classic. Uh, take your medicine. I don't need it. <laughs> you got Yamcha here. I'm a son of it. Just blows up. It, it's so funny. Uh, I was I was looking up on the history of Goku, and it comes to find out that every single time that he's died, which has only been twice, was by his choice. Actually, yeah, you're right about that. He literally said, "Fuck them kids," and dipped <laughs> out <laughs> both times. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can I take a bite of the kids and go trade? Okay, I go high. I go ten. Just fucking kill this. As soon as uh, years, oh, Goku's about to go fight. Okay, I won't see him for another three years. <laughs> she just, she just put life insurance on his ass already, dude. Oh my god. What's a life insurance policy on him? Dies or gets rich? <laughs> like every single time he dies. All right, cool. Do it again. <laughs> uh, Dragon Ball. That was a. That, I, the dub is okay, but I heard the dub actor for Goku is an asshole. So, Sean. Yeah, the newer one. The one with the afro or some shit with the curly hair. Yeah. So, yeah apparently, he's a dick in real life. I'm just like, yeah. I like the actor for Goku. I, I like the voice acting, but you can't hate. You can't like the person. Yeah. Some animes have really bad, like, really shit people doing the acting, but the voices are so good. And sometimes they have really nice people doing good voices. It's it's a hit or miss. Yeah, like, the, the voice actors and actress for Naruto and Vegeta are really good. Well, yeah. Vegeta and Piccolo, because they're the same person. Definitely. Well, it's not, think about it. It would have been really weird when he had conversations with himself. <laughs> I can't imagine in the studio and I'm losing my mind. I'm talking to myself. Wilson! <laughs> oh, man. It's just... Uh, anime. Anime. I love it. I love it. Same. I swear. It's just a nice little escape. Like, if I, if I weren't doing music, I'd probably be trying to pursue voice acting for an anime. Definitely. Ah, oh, dude. Anime is so good. I mean, both are amazing. When you got those music animes, which are like, oh, I don't know where Herder misses, but a lot of them are really good. Like Angel Beats. Angel Beats technically was in a music. Yeah. Okay. Like it had its own band and everything. It was super good. Definitely. Oh my God. We've been talking about this for, for an hour. <laughs> I think we should wrap things up. Oh, yeah. Let's, let's wrap up. Let's wrap up. <laughs> this has been another Nerd to Herder music interview. Today, our special guest. Was Joshua Roberts from Magnolia Park. You have an awesome day, my guy. <laughs> you as well, you as well.